this is an example about fitting um, some given data. Uh, here is the given data and finding a function of the form y is equal to c times b to the t. Uh, finding a function of this form c times b to the t that fits this data. Uh, this is an example of an exponential function. This is the form of an exponential function. And if our data, if our data is exponential, then there should be a formula like this which uh, describes it. Uh, we talked in class today about figuring out the test for whether or not some data is exponential or not. And we can see here that uh, from what we talked about in class that there is a constant ratio 1.307 and that ratio came about by um, <clears throat> computing the ratio of two consecutive values right. times it turns out to be 1.307 and then if you drag that formula down you will see that further ratios of two consecutive values are that same constant. So that's where the 1.307 number came from. And what we wanted to do uh, with the, the rest of this example was see if we could figure out an exponential function that fits this data. And the way we're going to do that is by finding two numbers, c and b, um, finding two numbers, c and b. Uh, we talked in class today about uh, because this ratio is a constant for any two consecutive values, then you can pick any two data points to get started in this problem. So let's pick time one, which is what we did in class, and 6.63.6. .6. Now this is the, the first time, so you might want to call this T1 and Y1. Right? And then you might pick the next consecutive time, which is 1.2 or 2.2 seconds later than 1. And then we have a Y2 value of 65.96 with some decimals after it. Okay. So one thing we'll notice here is that we know that the ratio of two consecutive values, that's the 1.307137289 number. Okay? So we know this ratio and it's a constant. And for the y2 and y1 value, it's the ratio 1.307. So what we wanted to do here is to take our two different data points, plug them into the function, and we can see that you'll get the y1 value is equal to c times b to the t1 power. But we already know that y1 is equal to the 63.6 number, but we also know that it is equal to some constant t times some number b to the 1 power. Okay. We also know that there is a y2, another y2 value, by plugging into this formula the t2 value. But we know that that y value is the 65.96 number with some of those de more decimals after it. But we know that if we plugged in t2 into the formula, we would get c times b to the 1.2 power. Okay. So we already know that the ratio y2 over y1, we already know what that number is, the 65.96 over the 63.6. We know that that ratio is the 1.307 number. But we also know that it is going to be equal to the ratio of the y values. But the y values we know to be c times b to the 1.2. And we also know the y1 value is c times b to the 1. What this tells us using our algebra simplifying and exponent rules is that the constant cancels out. B to the 1.2 over B to the 1 is 1.2 minus 1. And what we have here is an interesting formula that we don't know the value B, but we know that B to the 0 0.2 power is 1.037. And an alter, writing that B value to the 0 0.2 in another way, we can say that this is a fractional exponent. 
okay? And how did we handle fractional exponents in previous sections? We could then use our exponent rules to do take the 10 halves power of both sides. And now we can see here that our exponent rule is kicking in. We will get uh, b to the 2 tenths times 10 halves, and that's going to be equal to b to the 1 power. So we now know what b is. b is equal to the number 1.037, our ratio, but instead of it being to the first power, it is to the fifth power, 10 over 2. So we now know that our number for b is this b is going to be equal to the 1.037.1373 raised to the fifth power. Okay. And if you want the computer to compute that, you got to put an equal sign in front of it. And there is the b value being 1.2. So in this problem, we know that our formula is turning um, Sorry, my sister just called. Let me hang up on that if I can. I don't know how to do that. Oh, well, she'll hang up in a second. So, um, oh, sorry, I just hung up on my sister to finish this video. So that's how important this is. Uh, <laughs> So let's uh, we'll finish this. Let me see. Y is equal to a constant C. And we now know that B is 1.2 to some power T. And the question is, can we figure out um, what C is equal to now? But I think we knew a value. We knew that if uh, B is equal to 1.2, we can go back and try to use our t value and a y value. So y seems to be 63.6. The c value, we don't know, but we know that b is 1.2, and that happens when t is equal to 1. Now this tells me that c is equal to 63.6 divided by 1.2. So let's try that now. C is equal to 63.6. Choose any of the data points that you know and the times that you know. And that's where 53 comes from. So I think we now know that our formula that uh, creates this data is y, oops, sorry, that's a terrible color. Let me do that better. y is equal to 53 multiplied by 1.2 to the t power. Now we can check that. Uh, let's do a check of our answer. And if we put in the formula into this blank equal to, <laughs> uh, equal to 53 multiplied by 1.2 to the power, the time, which is in the A2 column, and drag this down. Whoops, I a little bit better here. We can see that the numbers that we're getting match up with the data that we had. Okay, so there is our formula that fits, fits the data. So ends this video.